Painting a custom home? Easy peasy. Okay, it may not be for everyone, but I've been following around Silvio painting on a large painting project for the last month or so. And what I wanna do is share with you three keys to a successful painting project. So whether you're a pro yourself or you're just interested in the process, smack that like button and let's dive in. Welcome to your number one source for all things painting and decorating. I'm James. I'll be the first to tell you, um, not every painting project is created equal. A repaint of a powder room will look drastically different than a massive commercial project requiring months and months of work and red tape and a huge crew of painters. But there are some principles that can apply to pretty much every paint project that a pro painter comes across. I wanted to collaborate with Silvio Painting for this video because he's been running a real tight ship for a long time in the painting industry and does some excellent work. So let's use this custom home as a bit of an opportunity to teach you the three keys to professional house painting. Now it's important to acknowledge that a lot of paint companies do a lot of different work. Some companies do more residential repaints, others do commercial projects that are much more large scale. Sylvia Painting does a lot of custom homes where they're pretty much there from start to finish. Even though it's a much bigger house and a much more more extensive process. I think there's a lot you can pick up from this, even if you are just doing those smaller projects. These principles are pretty universal. So let's start from the beginning. The first step I wanna mention is start with a bang, as in the bang and snap of painter's tape. Now a lot of painters will agree that prep is super important. You gotta have good prep or the finished product is gonna be garbage. Some people don't prep the way they should or maybe they think it's a waste of time. The thing is though, the better the prep you do, the more you don't need to think about maybe spilling some paint on the floor because it's covered or maybe worrying about overspray getting on the windows or any fixtures. You don't need to worry about that if you prep properly. So even though you're spending a lot of time in the beginning to make sure everything is nicely covered, it's gonna pay dividends. It's actually an investment in your own projects. Spend the time in the beginning so you don't have to worry about it throughout the rest of your project, which could be weeks and weeks. Large scale projects like this one require a lot of prep, which can take a lot of time. And certain paint companies that I've come across, no offense to them, they just see it as a bit of a waste of time because they wanna get right to the painting. There's always this need to start the production, but the most important part of the production is the prep. Any painter will tell you how crucial it is to properly prep your projects prior to painting. That's a lot of P words, but they're very important. Whatever anecdote you wanna use, prep is the most important part of any project because it sets the foundation for everything. This has everything to do with prepping the space for painting, covering the floors, covering any furniture or any fixtures that might be in the home, making sure everything is plastered properly, primed, sanded, all that stuff. A big part of doing the prep is using the right materials. And this is where Silvio makes a pretty clear point as to what he uses in the prep process. He's an incredible professional painter, but uh, a tad camera shy, a lot more than me at least. But I got him to talk to me about his process and I thought it was extremely valuable information that I wanted to share with all of you. If you don't prep it right, then the end results you know, it won't be there. And all the windows will be covered, the floor will be covered. Once the carpet is finished, we come in, we do light sand before anything, so that way that helps it remove the fibers. Then what we do, all the carpenter holes, we do it with the wood filler. And yes, we, did, we do give time to the next day to dry the wood filler. Always the goal is to make the hole disappear, so basically, it's like a hole was never there, right? We spray one coat of primer everywhere. Then uh, basically, then you know, next day, usually the primer, it's a water based acrylic, so it dries overnight, right? We just check uh, everywhere if it's any holes missing, which is gonna happen, right? What I really enjoyed about following Sylvie around and learning his process is his incredible attention to detail. It's a never ending, relentless task of making sure every single piece of wood is properly filled in, properly sanded, to the point where not only does he do wood filler the first time, but he'll come around a second time and double check. He even has one of his workers follow him around with a light to make sure that there's no micro cracks that are barely visible that'll show after the painting is done. He also uses a product called Bondo, which a lot of professional sprayers are familiar with, but not only interior painters like Silvio use Bondo, 
but people that work in automotives use it. It's an incredible product that does an amazing job at filling in those very, very tiny little holes and cracks. And what's great about it is it doesn't shrink and it doesn't move or adjust in the sanding process. Now, if you've been a pro painter for many, many years, you've come across a ton of different paint products, whether it's paint itself, brushes, rollers, poles, trays, compounds, and I'm sure they've helped you along the way, but there might be times where certain circumstances would only require maybe just a simple bit of plaster to fill some nail holes, or maybe some caulking on some baseboard. But when you start to get to some major projects where your customers are demanding a certain level of care and workmanship, you really wanna fine tune your level of optimization in the process. That means going with wood filler on the woodwork to help replicate the same texture as the wood you're working with. That also means maybe you gotta use Bondo to fill in those minor, minor hairline cracks to ensure that you won't see any shrinkage or movement during the sanding process. It's not always called for for every single circumstance, but in a project like this, to Silvio, it's the only way. It's always so interesting to see the slight differences that professional painters have in their process. And Silvio, what he does is he'll tape over this section of where the door hinge attaches to the frame, just so that no paint builds up on it to ensure that it's gonna be a completely flush, seamless attachment once the doors are on there. And he even is clever enough to mark down the number that corresponds to the door that frame belongs to. So everything is gonna fit nice and perfectly no matter what. Simple, but effective. The second key is control what you can. As your projects get larger and more complex and there's more moving parts, you wanna put yourself and your team in the best possible position to get the job done correctly. There will always be some sort of variables that you can't necessarily account for, which is why the stuff you can control, you should. This starts with the team of contractors you work with. Another big thing during those larger scale projects are other trades that are on site. Other professional carpenters, electricians, maybe even other painters in certain cases. You gotta learn to coordinate with them, which can be a challenge at times. Now, obviously you're not gonna be able to physically control what they do on their projects, but you can work within your means to protect your paint job from them. And that's what Silvio does. As painters, we're pretty much the last line of defense as tradespeople. You have installers that come in and they just install and leave, but they usually leave with us still doing our work. We're the last people to do our job. So we wanna make sure we're representing ourselves as best as possible. Silvio talks about the importance of protecting your work as a painter, because even though you can protect your own work, you can't really account for other people. You wanna make sure that like a defensive driver, you're accounting for the people around you, not just yourself or your team. Because not only are you doing great work, you're doing the work that you promised or even better. And that's all customers really want at the end of the day. They're paying a lot of money, so they wanna make sure the work is done properly. Other contractors, other trades working on site, they can have the best of intentions, but they're naturally going to be more concerned with their work rather than that beautiful finish on the trim that was just sprayed. I also wanted to get into the level of care that Silvio's team takes when it comes to painting doors specifically. As you can see here, the doors are removed and arranged in a zigzag pattern in the middle of the room. This helps with efficiency because you can spray most, if not all of the doors in one sitting, in one controlled location, and it allows everything to stay localized. One aspect of Silvio's process that I find particularly interesting was how he goes about eliminating overspray. And this is a massive consideration to make. Airless sprayers do a wonderful job at replicating that smooth factory finish on painted surfaces. But if you're not careful and do a bit too much dilly-dallying and lingering on the job, the overspray in the air could potentially make its way to other surfaces and create an undesirable bumpy texture. What Silvio does to alleviate this is to utilize not one, but two people spraying the doors together at the same time. This simple adjustment allows for the spraying time to be cut in half, so any potential overspray that hits any of the doors will do so while the paint is still wet. 
during its open time. When you have wet overspray on still wet doors, it's simply going to melt into the surface, which will help maintain that smooth factory finish that airless sprayers are known for. I was able to convince Silvio to be on camera as long as I didn't show his face. So <laughs> this is him explaining his process when spraying doors. So when we do the doors, we do two people. That guy one way, me another way. So we get him before, because again, think about it. If I, the circle I go this way, go this way, go this way. By the time I get there, that overspray I started there is gonna start drawing. I just wanted to go ahead and show you the sequence in real time because I've seen this whole accordion style arrangement of doors in the middle of the room before, but I've never seen it done with two people. And now Silvio has the sprayer and just like that, you have one painter on one side of the doors and the other on the other side to maximize your efficiency and make sure that the spraying is constantly going on and on. There's no opportunity for any surfaces to dry and then absorb overspray, which can create that textured surface that you don't want with sprayers. This way, your spray time is cut in half, so any overspray that may be in the air is just gonna end up on wet paint, which means it's gonna virtually disappear. This is all about control. Another important part of the process is once you've gotten your awesome smooth finish, you wanna make sure that it stays that way, which is why all the trim and woodwork are then covered, not only to protect them from any other spraying that might be happening, but also any other renovations that are happening in general. You have to have it set up to understand it. You have to protect yourself from other trades. What does that mean? Allow everybody to work, but meantime also protect yourself because you're gonna be the last guy walking out of the house. Right? So basically, you have to basically understand the system. Like it or not, that's what it is. Finally, you have number three, which is super important, probably the most important part. You just gotta trust the process. You've done the work to prep the space. You've protected your hard work from other trades. Now it's just about following the steps meticulously as you're meant to. I asked Silvio if a project like this was intimidating. And he simply said no. Custom painting, it's a, you know what it is? It's like more people that do underestimate it because okay, just, you know, it's easy. It's not as hard. You just have to be focused. You have to, how do I say like, you know, don't underestimate custom painting because again, you know, you gotta deliver what you promised and that's basically what you call yourself a pro. You gotta do whatever it takes. And there's nothing into it, just follow the steps. There's a lot of painters, I don't wanna judge anybody, but they go just two weeks done. No, it doesn't work, it's a custom house. It's not a production. It's not a just subdivision. No, no, this is a custom build. Everything, everything changes, so it's a different game. You see, we are appliers. We are the, the finishing line, right? So it's important to follow those steps. And what I really enjoy about Silvio's whole mindset and process is jobs of this magnitude may look daunting, but they're really not. It's just about following a very specific plan and sticking to it. As soon as you have the framework and the infrastructure all laid out, then you just go through the steps, go through the motions. Custom homes are by definition custom. It's a custom project, usually brand new. Maybe you're just dealing with freshly primed walls. And as long as you know how to tackle that project and go through all those little steps that you've learned over your 22 years of business, then the project becomes less daunting and the finish is that much better. Even though every job is different, the process is fundamentally the same. As long as you set a proper foundation, go through the steps and control what you can, you'll be much better off than just winging it every time on a house of this size. Big thank you to Silvio and his team for letting me join him on site. Subscribe if you want more painting related content to be fed to you. And I got some more videos coming right up, so stay locked in. Feel the blue skies, feeling so electric.